Hands up if you're afraid of Y seams. I know I am. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today we're going to be making a Japanese rice bag. I'm not sure if I'm going to get the pronunciation right, but it's also known as a komibukuro. Hopefully I've got that right. In Japanese culture, a komibukuro or a rice bag, they were often used to carry rice as an offering to temples and at festivals. There's your history lesson for the day. Thanks to my best mate Google for telling me all about the komibukuro or the Japanese rice bag. That's what we're making today. It's got Y seams. Uh, I have not done very many projects with Y seams in my entire life. I think this is probably going to be about the third or fourth time I've done them, but it's time to get over my fear of them. Let's make this bag. I think it's going to be very simple and a nice way to learn how to do Y seams without being overwhelmed by them in quilts or, or dressmaking. Come along. I'm going to make this bag in two different sizes. What we have here are a bunch of five inch squares and here I have 10 inch squares. For the outside of the bag and the inside of the bag, we need five pieces each. And then we need some extra fabric for tabs and our cord. You'll soon see how easy it is to make up this bag in any size you like. We're going to use the smaller pieces because it's easier to see on my table. So we need five pieces for the main and five for the lining. And this is the way it's going to be laid out. So I have a center piece and then I'll have these ones on the outside. So that's one side of the bag. We're going to make this reversible as well. And this is how the other side of the bag will look. For every piece of fabric that we have here, so that's the 10, we need to mark a quarter inch point at the corners of all of our pieces. I have a little two inch ruler that has quarter inch marks on it. Whether you work in inches or centimeters, it really doesn't matter. And the quarter inch measurement that we use, that also doesn't matter. If you want something wider, you can make it a half inch seam allowance, or you could do your quarter inch. What you can do in metric is six millimeters, or you can do one centimeter, completely up to you but it needs to be exactly the same for every single piece of fabric that you have. The reason I use inches a lot is because all of my tools are in inches. All I'm going to do is line up the quarter inch, make a point on every single corner. You want to get a marker that you can actually see on your fabric, but it only needs to be a very small mark. So we've got one there and there's one here. These are going to be our pivot points. When we're sewing this bag together we're going to sew along with our quarter of an inch, come to the point and our needle stops in that down position and that's when we can go and do the next step. Okay so it's really important when you're working with Y seams that you stop at exactly that position. I will go and mark the points on every piece of fabric, then we can go on to the next step. Because we're doing a bunch of Y seams, we need to mark a pivot point on every piece of fabric. So on the center piece, we want to mark a quarter of an inch point on each of the corners. And then on the outside pieces, we want to mark a quarter of an inch on the bottom section of each of our pieces of fabric. You should be able to see the little points on the bottom piece at the bottom edge of these joining pieces. Then we can start putting the bag together. What will happen is that these will become the sides and later on we'll be stitching the side seams closed. First of all, we're going to take the bottom and sew that together. So we'll put right sides facing, line these up perfectly and if you put a pin through the pivot point here that should match up with the mark that we've got on the other side. This when we're sewing is where we are going to start and stop. We'll start sewing here, go forward and then back but don't go beyond that point. Sew your quarter of an inch seam up to that point there and then you will stop 
go back and forward you'll do it and you'll finish that with a back stitch once that piece has been put together you can go to the next side so you can go to this side or either of these and you'll do the same thing so you place that fabric right side together on the edge there and sew that together take this one here place those right side together and you'll sew those together as well let's take this to the machine now this is my center piece to attach all the four wings I'm going to use the center piece so with right sides together I'm going to have my center piece up where that point is there I'll place that underneath my presser foot and this is where my needle needs to come down I'll turn the hand wheel on my machine until the needle comes down in that position that's where I can start sewing my machine will do an automatic back uh, forward and back stitch and then it'll just go forward when I get to the other end here where this other dot is I'm going to stop exactly in that position and then back stitch it's really important not to stitch beyond those two points so I pop my needle down where that point is I've put a seam gauge on here I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam I've got my seam gauge in line with that and so then I can just run my fabric along there and we can start sewing you don't want to pull or push your work through just let it guide through easily Yeah, now I know you can't see this but there's a that spot that I marked earlier I've stopped with my needle in the down position and all I'll do is back stitch then I'll get my next piece ready before I do that we'll open the fabric out and this this being the center we want to fold all of our seams away from the center so we hold the center down have the seam underneath facing the this piece of fabric so we'll just finger press that so that that seam is away from the center piece of fabric otherwise we're going to have all of our four seams facing in and it'll get a little bit bulky it doesn't matter which order you do these but I like to have the center piece on the top so I'll take the next piece of fabric this piece is going to be the flap for the side and I'm going to position that directly underneath and we'll do the same thing we did before needle down right where that point is making sure that you've got a quarter of an inch seam the fabric at this end will stop in line with the seam here so this one here we've just folded the seam away you also don't want to have this seam facing the inside of the fabric because you've got a stitch up to that point line up your fabric I'm coming up to that point there and I'll do a half stitch sometimes you might need to lift your presser foot and just move the fabric under to the right spot and then have the needle come down make sure your needle is down here and then back stitch and here you can see we've got the three pieces of fabric joined at the corner with a quarter of an inch unstitched on each of the pieces fold the seam out just press that down then you can grab your next piece of fabric lining on top again and once you've lined that up at the top there by having this bottom edge here folded away from the center you'll see that it lines up with the corner here so that corner there lines up with the little bit of a corner at the bottom there and we have one more piece to put on the right sides together and if you have these seams here folded out it'll be easier for you to line up the side edges of this piece of fabric and because you're starting at those pivot points you've got no risk of sewing over the other edges of your fabric
and back stitch. Now we have the center piece attached to all four sides and so far that's looking pretty good. Okay here's how our bag is looking so far. We've finger pressed all of these seams in place and if you have a look at the underside you can see the side seam here from the center has all been pushed outward. If we had them in you'd end up having lots of bulky corners. So push all of your seams out. You can press this now if you want but it's not necessary. You'll notice that we haven't used any stabilizer on this. You don't need to. It's supposed to be just a nice simple floppy bag but if it's something that you want then you can go ahead and do that. Now we have to join these side seams together. We'll take these two sides here, line them up until you get to the end and you can see the two side seams here will line up along the edge and you've got that little point there from the center piece of fabric. So once you've lined your fabric up like that we can sew from the pivot point right to the very end of the fabric and do a back stitch. On the first one I'm going to leave a small opening of about an inch and a half or so. So I'll start here, come up to here and back stitch, leave an opening, back stitch, come up to here and finish it just on one piece only and that'll be for the lining. You won't need to do it for the outside piece. You can just lay your fabric like that and come along on your machine and sew straight down here. What I like to do is I'll still line up those side seams but I'll take this edge here and this one and I'm going to line them up here and what happens is that these two fabric pieces will come together and line up. I feel as though that's going to give me a better starting position here knowing that the side edges of my center piece are lined up it'll help me keep everything square and then I've got my side seam lined up there. Start here and sew to the end. By doing that it also means I have no fabric in the way. Once that side seam is done you'll come along to the next one and you'll do the same thing. Open it all out again, take this edge here, bring that up to the edge beside it and then you can take the next two pieces and so that in place as well. You're always lining up the side seams of the center square and then you'll sew down here. So it doesn't matter if you go with this technique or if you just take your side seams and have the rest of the fabric open like that. It's really personal choice. I prefer to do it with the center fabric lined up so that it forces the side seams to come together. Either way we'll take this to the machine. So the first one for the lining only come up to here leave an opening and finish the end then we can just sew all of the other sides to the end and we'll repeat that for the outer fabric as well. Okay those long edges are lined up along the side there and now we're going to sew up this side seam. We're going to start from the bottom at the same pivot point and then we can sew all the way to the end. Because we need an opening for turning the bag through later on I like to try and remember to leave an opening. <laughs> so on the first side seam I'm going to stop here. I'll come up about an inch and a half or so. Back stitch. I'll leave a gap of a couple of inches here then I'll back stitch again here and sew to the end and back stitch. So that's my first side seam done but I've left a little opening for turning the bag through after. We only need to do that for the inside of the bag we don't need to do it on the other piece. And now I just take the next side seam, place the edges of the fabric together, line them up at the top there and along to the bottom. Then what I'll do is I'll grab the base and I'll take the side edge of this base 
to the side edge of the other base. So we've got this side going to the next side. It helps you line everything up along the edge here and it makes it a little bit easier to line up these side seams and you know that you're going to start sewing at that point in the corner there and the other layers of fabric are sitting out of the way so you're not going to risk sewing over them and this one we can sew all the way to the end For the remaining side seams we're going to do the same thing, just bring the sides together, take this side of the base over to the next side. That will help you keep your fabric out of the way and line up your side seam. You can see underneath by doing that you've got all the fabric folded in a triangle this is where your seams have been finishing and you'll have the next piece of fabric. These two pieces of fabric joined right here as well. Keeps everything out of the way. And we have one more to go. Now that we've done our little boxes, we're almost ready to put one inside the other. What I've got here is another square that is five inches and we're going to make some tabs for the top of the bag. So we wanna have four tabs on this five inch bag. For this bigger one that is 10 inches, I'm going to have two tabs on each side. So the bigger your bag is, the more tabs you're going to need. But for this small one here for the moment, we just need one tab on each side of the bag. So using the five inch piece of fabric, we're going to cut that in half. So that'll be two and a half inches. You can use just one long strip of fabric as well. And then we're going to fold this in half. Fold the raw edges into the center. and bring the folds together and then we can sew this down both long edges. We'll do that with both of these strips then we're going to cut that in half again and it'll give us four loops. For the bigger bag I've got a 10 inch square. What I need here is two strips at two and a half inches And we'll do the same thing, fold it in half and fold the edges in again. We'll sew both of those together just like this. So I'm going to sew the strips together for both bags all at the same time. You don't have to worry about back stitching at the beginning and the end. Sew all the way down one side, then come back up the other side. Then we can cut them to size. Okay, we can cut these up, fold the short ones in half. We need four pieces for the small bag and for the larger bag we'll use eight pieces because it's double the size. Fold that in half and fold that in half again. And cut those up as well. I'll set these aside for the bigger bag. We've got our smaller one here. Find the center at the top edge I'm just going to finger press a crease in there on all four sides. You only need to do this for one of the bag pieces. Okay, so I've got a little crease mark there. Take your tab, 
fold it in half and the outs and the raw edge will be facing the raw edge of your fabric place your tabs on the right side of your fabric and not the wrong side and we'll put one on each segment we've got a tab in the center of the top of each piece of fabric here you can take this to the machine and stitch it down really close to the edge if you like or you can put your lining piece straight inside and sew it all together for the purpose of the video I will actually go and sew all of these now so that it'll make it easier to go through the next step with you for the larger bag we need to put two tabs on each side so the easiest way to do that is to bring one side together find the center and then fold that center into the side seam so then we've created the center of the center and if I put a pin here that's the center of the large piece of fabric so once again we have this square here fold that in half take the center of that fabric and fold that in half again and mark that with a pin so you want to mark this side this side and the other side with a pin that's going to be the position of your tabs Now we have the tabs in position for one side we can take this side turn it around so I've got the opposite piece of fabric I'll just lay these over the top of each other matching up those side seams and you can see by the pin mark where the next tab needs to go So we've got our tabs lined up on the opposite sides then you can take one side bring it over to the other side and position your tabs on the next piece of fabric as well just saves having to measure every single piece of fabric of course if you don't want to do it like that you can go and find the center of each of the pieces of fabric individually now rather than taking you to the machine with me I'm going to quickly go and sew these tabs in place all right we're nearly finished we've got our little boxes here tabs are in place I've got an opening on one side of one of the bags and we now need to put one inside the other so this bag here is inside out the other one I'm going to turn the right way out and we want the right side facing the right side of the bag so just put one inside the other and match up the side seams so with one bag inside the other and we've got right sides facing go to your side seams so I'll keep them pressed open and I'll line up those two seams right on the edge there clip them together at every intersecting seam and I'll also put a clip where the tabs are just because there's a little bit of weight in there and it'll help keep the fabric sturdy okay let's do the final step at the machine before we put our cord around it I'm going to sew all the way around the entire top of the bag both of these and then once that's done we can find the opening that we've made an allowance for and turn the bag the right way around and we'll just use a quarter of an inch seam allowance after I've turned it the right way around I will top stitch the entire top edge as well I usually like to start at a side seam back stitch at the beginning and then again when you're finished
Now find the opening, turn it the right way around and then we can fold all the edges nice and neatly along the top and we'll top stitch. All right, I've got the edges folded over and we can now top stitch. Doesn't matter where you start. This is the outside of the bag and again that doesn't really matter either because this is going to be reversible. I do like to top stitch from the side that's going to be seen the most. This is where your opening is that we've used for turning through. If you want to make this a reversible bag, you can go along and whip stitch that seam closed. I'm not going to make mine reversible. I'm happy just to sew over that side seam and then turn the bag the right way round. So that's stitched closed and we can turn this now the right way around Okay, our bags are almost done. The only thing we need to do now is put a cord around these loops. So the big bag I've done already, I've just grabbed some ribbon and a toggle and I've fed the ribbon around the loops and in through the toggles. So we're going to do that in a minute and I'm also going to show you how to make some little ornamental things for the end of your cord. You could, of course, just go and tie a knot in the cord, but I thought these would be a bit of fun. So I'm going to show you how to make those in a minute. First thing we need for our small bag is about 25 to 30 inches of cord or ribbon, or you can even use bias binding. So grab some bias binding, fold it in half, and stitch it closed down the long edge then you'll have a cord suitable for feeding through your loops. So whether you have ribbon, bias binding, or even just some narrow cord, you can use any of those things. We've got the four loops here, just thread your ribbon through that. So if you've got the bigger bag, you just wanna have double the overall width of your bag, plus a little bit extra for a tail. The easiest thing to do is just feed your cord or ribbon on and have an allowance for some extra tail hanging over. Now I've got a toggle and my ribbon and the ribbon here is quite uh, unstable and it frays a lot when you try and get it through the holes in the toggle. So a quick fix for that is tape. I'll wind the tape tightly around the cord it almost makes it like the end of a shoelace and I'll bring it around into a point here that will now fit through this toggle. You don't have to have toggles at all if you don't have access to them but feed that through and do the same for the other one. So just wrap the tape tightly around your cord and we'll feed that through the other side. Sometimes toggles only have one hole and you'll feed through both through the same hole won't matter, they'll both work the same way. And once you've got your toggle on there, you can remove the end that's got the tape. If you don't want to make this little thingamajig for the end of your cord, then all you need to do now is tie it in a knot and it won't go any further than your toggle. Now I'm going to show you how to make that little thingamajig. <laughs> um, I have no idea what it's called. Uh, we have a piece of fabric that is three inches square and another piece of fabric that is two and a half inches square. Fold that in half on the diagonal. And we'll do the same for the other one. The lighter weight the fabric is, the better for this. Uh, it is a little bit awkward pulling it through. You'll know what I mean when you get to it. So what I've got now is the three inch square folded in half, the two and a half inch square folded in half. We've got the folds at the top here. Then we're going to take both of these corners here and fold that down. And we'll do the same on this side. So this 
point here, we'll fold that down. There's no uh, measurement for how far you need to fold it down. You can just do it as far as you like. But do leave a gap here because we will be putting our cord through this shortly. So you've got your two folded triangles and then the corners folded back over. You're going to sew down both of these two side edges. And when you're done, it's going to look like that. Okay, so on the back you've just got the brown fabric and you've got the red contrast on the inside there. So once you've done that, then you'll take your cord, place that in the middle there, have a little bit hanging over and fold the two stitched edges together. We'll take that to the machine and we'll sew a little bit of a curve just at this corner here. So a curve back and forth a couple of times, come all the way to the end and restitch here. You can curve that as well and then we can pull the layers through after we've trimmed it. So let's take two of these to the machine, sew those, then we'll put the ribbon inside and then we'll close it up again. I've got the bag with the ribbon threaded through. Place that over the edge there. I have overhung the ribbon a little bit. Fold that in half. And I'll just round the edge a little bit. And that's all we need to do. We'll trim this back so that it'll be easier to turn this loop around. Yeah, and repeat for the other one. Okay, we've got our little dangly things finished on both bags. We need to trim it back. So you'll just cut close to the edge here. You'll cut as close as you can get without cutting through the stitches. And this is the fiddliest part, is trying to turn this and pull the cord through. And if you've got fabric that's a little bit lighter weight than the quilting cotton that I've used here, it'll make it much easier. So after a little bit of twisting and tugging, the stitching is on the inside there. You can't even notice it. And you can just keep pulling the fabric out until you've got it looking the way you want. And then that small triangle becomes a feature on the outside. So go and trim the others and we can have a look at the finished bag. And there's our little dangly bits. I've accidentally pulled one too tight so just be careful when you do pull the cord through and turn your little leaves over. So I've just gone and stitched it back on again. We've got our great big one here, big enough to put some clothes in and that has the double loops on each piece of fabric. It's a great little dilly bag type thing. And then we have our smaller one here with the single loops on each side. And if you wanted to, you could easily go and put an extra loop on each side. I don't think it really needs to. It's a cute little bag as it is, perfectly functional. And there we have our little dangly bits. <laughs> Please tell me what they're called. How did you enjoy that video? I actually really enjoyed making this bag. And here we have it, a little tiny Japanese rice bag. And we've even filled it up with rice. <laughs> Best to not make a mess in my room. <laughs> a cute little bag. This would actually make a really good doorstop. We've got that draw cord or ribbon on the tabs there with a little toggle. The toggle is optional and these uh, little dangly flower bit, flower ends. I've no idea what they're called. Somebody, if somebody knows what those things are called, let me know in the comments below. So we've got the small one and the larger one. 
this would make a great bag just to sling over your shoulder and perhaps run away from home if you wanted to. Maybe give it to one of the naughty kids in the family. <laughs> it's a very simple bag to make, just, just five squares each for the inside and the outside. Five inch squares, 10 inch squares. You can see the difference that the size makes in those. You can do them in any size at all. And as I said earlier, the seam allowance that you choose, that's what you're going to put on your pivot points. Uh, so it doesn't have to be quarter of an inch, it can be one centimetre, half a centimetre, half an inch, whatever you want to work with. Sometimes a wider seam allowance is actually beneficial when you're learning how to do something. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.